Hi. And welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Earth. Good day. <laughs> welcome to the big show. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Miss Drain. We're back again. We're going to finish up uh, ellipses in section 10.4 for part two. And remember, the last thing that we did was we looked at, I'll just go back a couple screens really quick. We looked at the general form of an ellipse. So based off of that, we know that the center is at HK, and we also know that there's the foci or foci along the major axis, plus or minus C, where C squared is A squared minus B squared. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's an example like 18 through 29. It wants us to write the equation of the ellipse in standard form. Well, if we're going to do that, remember that the standard form looked like it had the variables on the left, and then on the right side it just had the number 1. So if we're going to get that, we need to divide 250 by itself to create the number 1. And so, therefore, we have to divide everything by 250. Now, once we do that, we'll get 10 goes into 250. 25 times plus 25 goes into itself or excuse me 25 goes into 250 10 times and that's equal to 1 so now it's in standard form I do want to point out that in this case the numbers kind of ended up flip-flopping like the 25 from up here went down to the other uh, denominator that does not always happen and it's not an automatic thing where you can just move them around like that you have to divide so now we have it in standard form um, this one looks like it's in standard form because it's equal to 1, but remember in the general form of the ellipse, there is no coefficient for x squared or y squared. So in this case, what we have to do is we have to get rid of this 2 somehow. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take 2 basically, like we did in the other, in the previous example, when we divided it into the denominator, we'll do that. How many times does 2 go into 7? Well, it would be 3 and a half, and that's equal to 1. Alternatively, instead of 3.5, you could write it as 7 over 2, and remember that it's that fraction. It might be a little weird to do that. This is probably okay for our purposes of calculating uh, different aspects of the ellipse and graphing it. So there it is. You got this one in standard form now. So now we've got another one. This one wants us to graph the equation. Well, first thing I want to do is let's figure out where the foci are. C squared is A squared minus B squared. So then what I'll need to do is just plug in. Let's let a squared be 49, and let's let b squared be 4. And that's because I want to make sure that when I subtract, I don't get a negative. So that c squared is equal to 45. And then if I just go ahead and take the square root of both sides, then I'll get c. Uh, sorry about that little calculator malfunction. We're just going to take square root of 45. We'll get C's approximately 6.7, so I should probably use the squiggly equals. Okay, so knowing that, let's just go ahead and graph this then, if C is 6.7. So we had x squared over 4 plus y squared over 49 is equal to 1 and we know that C is approximately 6.7. Okay, so let's graph it. Well, we know that we've got the center at the origin, so I'll just put a mark there at the origin for the center. And then we also know that because the 4 is underneath the X, if I take the square root of 4, I'll get 2. That means I go 2 units in the X direction away from the center, okay, or in the horizontal direction. Now if I take the square root of 49, it's going to get me 7. That means since it's underneath y, I go 7 units in the y direction. So 2, 4, 6, here's 7. And I'll have to scroll down here. We'll get 2, 4, 6, 7. Okay. And then also don't forget that I've got c is 6.7. And that goes along the major axis, which is the biggest one. So it's here, somewhere around 6.7. I'll draw it kind of close. And then what I have is... I'm really horrible at drawing these, so we'll just try to make this look like it. Okay. So, yeah, it's close enough. There's our ellipse. 
Okay, going back to, excuse me, another example. On this one, uh, same thing as before. Let's calculate the foci. And we'll get c squared is 16 take away 6. So that gives me that c squared is 10, which if I take the square root, let me get an exact value here. It's going to be c is approximately 3.2. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and graph it. I had x squared over 16 plus y squared over 6 is 1, and c was approximately 3.2. Okay, so we'll graph it, same thing as before. If I take square root of 16, I get 4. That means 4 units in the x direction away from the center. And since there's no h and k, the center's here at 0. So I'll go 4 units in the x direction here and then here. And then on the next one, I'll take the square root of 6, and the square root of 6 is approximately 2.4 or so, and that will be in the y direction away from the center. And then the last thing is just to graph the foci, which is 3.2 in the major axis direction. Here the longest axis is in the x direction, so I'll go 3.2 in either direction. And then with that, it looks like I've got all the components set. All that I've got to do is, is just graph this. And I know you think I'm cheating because I'm using this tool, but trust me, you do not want me to try to freehand an ellipse. Okay, it doesn't look anything like an ellipse, so I'm, I'm saving you by doing this. You should thank me. No thanks needed. Okay. Uh, last couple. Let's look at writing the equation of the ellipse with this given information. Well, the first thing I want to do is let's just make a sketch to see what we're dealing with here. So I have a vertex at 0, 6, and by the way, the, uh, for these problems, we'll assume that the center is at the origin. A vertex at 0, 6, which is up here and down here at 6 and negative 6, and a covertex at 5, 0. So here's negative 5 and 5. Now that I see that, I, I can pretty much tell that what I've got is a, since this is a covertex and this is a vertex, that this distance here is my major axis. Okay, so if this is 6 units and that is in the y direction, by the way, the general form of the ellipse is going to look something like this, right? Now, since the major axis is in the, in the y direction, what did I take the square root of down here to get 6? Because that's saying I went 6 units away from the center. Well, that would be 36, right? Because 6 squared is 36. Now, the covertex was in the x direction. And the covertex is 5 units. So in order to get 5, I had to take the square root of something. Well, that square root was 25, or the number that I took the square root of. So this is your general form, okay? Just going by the vertex and the covertex. And then last one, let's take a look at how we're going to find this equation when I've got a vertex here at 5, 0. This is a vertex at 5, 0. And I've got a, a focus here at negative 3, 0. Well, that means that there's also a vertex here at negative 5. And there's also a focus here. This is focus and focus. A focus here at 3, 0. Well, so what does that mean? It looks like that my distance from here to here for the vertex is five units. So if I set up my general form, then what I've got is in the x direction, I have the vertex. So if I square that to get 25, that gives me the number that I would have to square root to get five. And notice that my focus is three units long. That means that c squared is a squared minus b squared is the only way I'm gonna find this other denominator. So it's going to be 3 squared is, let's say, 25 for a squared, because this is my a squared value, minus b squared. Or 9 is 25 minus b squared. So what would I have to subtract from 25 to get 9? So it looks like my b squared is 16. And that can go directly right here, because remember, the general form of an ellipse is here is a squared, and this is b squared. So it looks like that's it, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in again, and we'll see you soon.